the u s government has proposed a rule to slash carbon emissions from american power plants those plants make up one third of the country's carbon emissions each year opponents say that proposal will cost american jobs and cut economic growth white house correspondent jessica stone joins us now from the white house north lawn with the details and jessica everyone's asking the question how will this impact the american economy well, in that question, it really depends on who you ask, Phil. You know, the White House says the rule will lead to fewer costs in combating climate change over time, but the chief lobbyist for the U.S. business community says it will lead to higher electricity costs. Coal-fired power plants are in the crosshairs here in the United States. They produce nearly 40 percent of the electricity that powers American homes. But Monday, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency called on them, as well as natural gas-fired plants, to cut carbon emissions by an additional 17 percent from 2005 levels by the year 2030. EPA Administrator Gina McCarthy says reducing carbon emissions is the best way to cut down on costs brought about by a warming planet. Hurricane Sandy alone cost an estimated 65 billion U.S. dollars in cleanup costs. 2012 was the second most expensive year in U.S. history for natural disasters. Even the largest sectors of our, of our economy buckle under the pressures of a changing climate. And when they give way, so do businesses that support them and local economies that depend on them. Under the proposal, individual U.S. states would be able to come up with a plan to meet the reduction goal. States can also join a cap-and-trade program to trade carbon credits until the power plant can retrofit its power source. It'll deliver the certainty that private investment is looking for, that will unleash market forces, that will drive even deeper reductions through innovation and investment. It will spur cleaner technologies and power of all sorts so that we can bring new low-carbon technologies to the table. But it didn't take long for critics to pounce. This is the single worst blow to Kentucky's economy in modern times. Nothing else even comes close to what this regulation will do to our state and its ability to compete. And a coal industry spokesman says, quote, if these rules are allowed to go into effect, the administration, for all intents and purposes, is creating America's next energy crisis. And Phil, the EPA itself estimates that the cost of compliance to these power plants uh, could be as high as $8 billion a year, and that's all the way up until 2030. Phil? Jessica, you know here in this city, uh, within minutes, of course, the critics came out and you had one of them on, uh, Senator McConnell. Uh, explain to our viewers the difference between this law, essentially, that's being tossed around that's not really a law because technically it's Obama is just making, saying, look, this is a new rule. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that the president actually tried to meet climate change uh, goals that he set out in the United Nations, that 2009 pledge to cut emissions by 17 percent by 2020. He signed that. He pledged that. He's tried to accomplish that. Uh, but legislation failed in the U.S. Uh, Senate back in 2010 after a couple of attempts uh, in the early part of his presidency. Now we're seeing him, as in many other areas of his presidency, resorting to executive action. This is an EPA rule. It will have a hundred 120 days of public comment on it, uh, but instead of getting uh, basically uh, all 500 some members of the U.S. Congress to weigh in, uh, this will go directly uh, to states and to the leaders of the states and will really be up to them to implement it. Okay, Jessica, thank you.